The final reveals for DBT6 have been revealed, but before I'm going to talk about that, we have some other cars to take a look at because we have a new ride line from DBT06 which we haven't covered on the channel before. It's time to look at some heroes! Hey car fighters, welcome back to another car update and this is going to be the second to last review video about DBT06 so buckle up because we're going to go through these fast including the next video so we can head on into the future content and not dabble in the past any longer. So without any further ado, let's take a look at these new Nova Grapper like cards for Brandgate with the new heroes with a brand new mechanic and a whole new spice in the future. And with a new mechanic and an archetype that brings a new ride line so here we have the brand new starter of the ride line which is Galactic Hero Purely Echno and it's a generic starter so we can move on to the grade one. Now for the grade one we have Galactic Hero Architect Percy and this grade one has the effect although when the units place in the Vanguard Circle search your deck for up to one base card and reveal it put it into your hand and shuffle your deck. So surprise surprise to nobody it's a brand new brand gate mechanic ride line so that will then also bring in its own unique set order mechanic and we're going to tackle that set order mechanic right after this card but let's take a look at the secondary effect because overall this first effect is the same as any other grade one in brand gate that just searches out your main gimmicks uh, set order card as for the second effect for Percy, we have continuous regular circle. During the battle, this unit boosts a unit with hero and its card name. This unit gets power plus 5k. So it's a conditional 13k booster, which is fine. Now, moving on to the new set order base type card, we've got Heroes Base Ages. And keep in mind, this is a grade 2 set order. So that means even though you can search it out on turn 1, you can only start playing these cards from turn 2. And I'm talking about playing these cards because you want to play more than one base instead of like the singular prison card in the prison archetype. As the base effects are, although when this card is put into your order zone, look at the 7 cards from the top of your deck, choose up to 3 cards with hero in their card names from among them, reveal them, Put up to one of those cards into your hand and scout up to two of those cards into your base and shuffle your deck. So this is the reason why you want to play these cards as many copies as possible because this is essentially a plus mechanic. You turn this card into another card in your hand but you also scout two cards so you filter your cards from your deck. And you might think to yourself, what does this scouting actually do? Well, that's the following two effects come into play here as it has the effect act from order zone cost rest this card and discard a card from your hand. Choose one of your scouted cards with grade less than or equal to your vanguard and call to the rearguard circle. So essentially this is a way to have a second hand like Angel Feathers has with the damage zone. This hero deck has that with the order zone. So that's the interesting thing here that basically allows you to generate more option with the filtering of top 7 cards of your deck and potentially other ways to scout cards which we're going to talk about with the other cards in this reveal. So... But it also has another effect, which is auto from order zone. When your unit is attacked, cause Soul Bless 1 and arrest this card. Choose one of your scouted cards and call to the Guardian Circle. So this is a way to get more shield value. And this is and this is what I like about this card design, is because this base basically emulates the same dynamic that we have with every single card in Vanguard. If you have a card in your hand, you make the conscious decision to either call to the field and get the offensive value or keep it in hand so you can guard with it to get the defensive value of the card with the shield printed on the card. And that is the same thing that applies here with this base card because you need to determine if you're going to use it to get a card onto the field for aggression or get a card into the in the guardian circle for defensive value because Yes, you're going to stand this base card at the, at the start of your turn, but you're not able to use the same base card to call a unit and then immediately also call a unit to the Guardian Circle during your opponent's turn because the card is still at rest. So that's an interesting dynamic that this card has that I really like about the design of this. And this whole skill text, these three skills in themselves basically tells us you want to play as many copies of this card as possible because not only will you filter your deck more efficiently, 
Also, you're able to use this effect multiple times during a single turn because essentially the scout card pool is shared among these base cards. So if you have like four cards in your base, then you can rest two cards to call two. And maybe if a third copy is still standing, then during the, uh, during the guard step, you can rest the third one to call something to the guard step. So that's an interesting dynamic that we have here. And I like the design of these cards quite a lot. But let's take a look at the rest of the ride line to see where this whole mechanic and this archetype goes and then to the support cards to round everything up. So moving up to the grade 2, we have Galactic Hero Wired Cruston. And Cruston has the effect, act on Vanguard Circle once a turn costs, scout a card with hero and its card name from your hand into your base and draw a card. Scouted cards are put face up into your order zone. So where the base itself scouts from the top seven cards from your deck, this allows you to scout cards from your hand. So let's say for example, you have a specific card that you want to have in your base, but you accidentally draw into it. With this effect, you can put it into the base and basically scout it through that. So that increases the consistency of gaining the value of your card, which is very nice because it allows you to basically scout almost from everywhere. But it also has a secondary effect, which might confuse us a bit, but gives us a glimpse of what the rest of the mechanic of this archetype is trying to do, it, because it has the effect on a rigor circle once a turn, when this unit is moved to another rearguard circle during the battle phase, this unit gets power plus 5k until the end of turn. So this already tells us there's some type of multi-tech engine here that allows this thing to become a 15k beater. Overall, I think this is a great card for your right line. Maybe a sophisticated beater is a bit awkward because it's very situational, whereas we have just generic 15k beaters in Brandgate to begin with. Keep in mind, it does have the hero name, so you're probably going to play this in the early stages of this deck until we get more hero support cards in future sets so we can basically replace this card. Now, moving up to the grade 3 of the ride line, the big boss unit that we have so far, we have Galactic Hero Unite Danos. And Danos has the effect, continues a finger circle. All of your front rear with hero in their card names get power plus 5k active on opponent's turn 2. So this is offensively as well as defensively, which is nice. And keep in mind, we have this type of multi-tacking with swapping cards so this power will be then given to the other unit in the column in the front row so this is a nice way to empower your multi-tech engine as well but then it also has the effect auto vanguard circle when it's unit attacks if your order zone has a base card cost counter plus one until the end of the battle this unit gets power plus 15k and if your order zone has three or more base cards it gets critical plus one so it's essentially a big vanguard beater that also empowers your side columns overall as a boss unit, I think it's a bit underwhelming because it doesn't really do anything than just bigger numbers. And that's not really what I want from a boss card. Now, does this mean this archetype, this right line is, is basically doomed? No. There is a highly likely chance that we will get a different boss unit in the future that we can just slap onto the great free spot of this ride line. We have seen this in many other ride lines. A good example is of course the new Zorg and Orphis that we've seen. Also the original five ride lines just get a brand new grade four. Nirvana got a brand new ride line in altogether that you can like splash the new grade three. Also we've seen the new Trada grade three that also got like immediately a new version. So there is a big chance that we will get a new hero grade three that is designed as the new evolution of the boss grade 3 of the ride line so i don't mind this as much right now i just hope they're gonna improve this at some point but this card does have some synergies if we take a look at the rest of the support cast around this ride line because that then allows to flesh this deck out so let's take a look at the grade ones that we have and first up we've got the grade one capable helper yes it's not a hero card but it does support the archetype quite nicely as it has the effect although when is unit's place on the rigor circle, Soul Bliss cost, Soul Bliss 1, choose a card with hero in the card name from your drop and scout it into your base. So we saw scouting from the top 7 deck, we saw scouting from your hand, but now we also have scouting from the drop zone. So this increased the consistency of your whole engine even further. Because now, if we need to discard a card early game that we actually want to have in our, in our deck, in our, in our base, this is a great way to just put it in. Or let's say, for example, a specific card that has a strong on place effect, or maybe a guard circle effect from the base, this is a nice way to just recycle that card over and over and over again. And right now, I think this is like an easy 3 to 4 off because of the limitation of the amount of cards this deck has. But over time, once we get more heroes, I can see this card being like a tech choice, like maybe a 1 off or 2 off, or maybe a 3 off depending on how you build your deck, by the sheer fact that it allows us to potentially reuse very strong heroes over and over and over again. Because there are also cards 
that has effects when they are scouted. And this card allows you to reuse those effects again and again. So this has a lot of potential depending on the quality of future hero cards. Now talking about a quality hero card, we got a very strong grade one, which is a key component of our win condition that we have right now, as we have Galactic Hero Direct Foley. And Foley has the effect Auto Back Row Center Rearguard Circle, which means the circle behind your Vanguard. At the end of the battle, your grade three Vanguard with hero and his card name attacked, cause Solace 1 and arrest this unit. Choose two of your rearguards in the same column as each other and exchange their position. So basically what this tells us is that we're going to attack with our Vanguard without being boosted. So now the Vanguard getting 15k power makes sense because otherwise it will be relatively weak. And also this makes sense of the grade 2 that gains power if it uh, swaps uh, circles during the battle phase because this allows you to swap those circles. And it also shows us the value of the grade 3 passive 5k buff to the units in the front row because you're going to swap those two units so the newly called unit, if it has the hero name, will also get the additional 5k power. So we get stronger beaters here during the battle phase. While we're multi-attacking, you want to have stronger beaters on your last attack. So this is a nice addition to that game plan. Now, is this good? It's a bit iffy. Right now, we do have some consistency with the fact that the base allows us to check top 7 for heroes. So we can, to some extent, get some consistent access to this grade 1. But it's not going to be 100% of the time. And without this grade 1, the grade 3 Vanguard feels... A bit like Luster, because you don't achieve the multi tag and you don't justify the potential extra 15k power if you're just going to boost behind it. So maybe you're not even going to use the Vanguard's ability, and it's just a bit of padded stats, and that's it. Which feels a bit, a bit yikes right now. So it feels like the deck is going to live or die by this particular grade 1, and hopefully with future support, that's going to change a bit. But that said, we have some grade 2s as well that flash the deck out a little bit more to give the deck at least... A bit more options and one of those cards being a defensive card in the likes of galactic hero rampart espida and espida has the effect auto when this card is scouted soul charge one so this is one of those cards that activate once it gets scouted so we're gonna probably see more skills like this in the future where we're gonna see benefit of actually scouting specific cards and in this case we get a soul which allows us to potentially refund the cost of our base effects to get units onto the guardian circle or other particular cards like the great one that also costs soul so this is a nice way to get some resources for free and as soon as we can scout this from the drop or hand or from deck it is actually relatively consistent to get this skill off but it also has the effect continues on guardian circle if your order zone has a base card and you have a vanguard with hero's card name this unit gets shield plus 10k so it's a 15k shield which again synergize with the base because you want to scout this for the soul but then you can use that soul to get a 15k shield unit during your opponent's turn if you need an extra shield. Now, you don't have to use this, but this is a way if you feel like you need 15k shield, this could be there at all times. But at the same time, if you draw onto this card, you can just call it from hand and it's a 15k shield unit. So if you feel like you need more shield or you want a soldier's engine, this can be a nice card for that deck. But we also have another in Archetype Grade 2 in the likes of Galactic Hero Flatten Svire. And Svire has the effect. Auto, when this unit is placed on a rearguard circle, cost count plus one. Choose one of your opponent's front row rearguards in the same column as this unit and retire. So it's just very simple spot removal. But it also has the effect, continues a rearguard circle. During a turn, if your order zone has a base card, this unit gets power plus 15k. So a 15k beater that also works on turn two. So this could be nice aggression for early aggro. And during the potential multi-tech turn, this could be a 20k beater on its own, which can at the very least make some decent number. And that's the final in archetype support card that we see. So overall, the mechanic is probably not right there just yet. We just lack the direct support cards with in archetype name cards because it's very hero centric. You want to uh, you want to search for heroes, you want to play as many heroes. But right now, the quality of the hero units themselves feel a bit lackluster. The mechanic itself, the base itself, feels pretty powerful but it needs the actual units to back it up and that's what we're lacking right now i feel like this archetype needs more hero cards that either do something when scouted or maybe do something when they are called from this base onto the field or something or better like or just better on place effects to reuse this effect and i think they need a different grade 3 boss unit that's less reliant on a specific unit 
Unless we get more consistency within the archetype that maybe we have another card like the red one that allows us to achieve some game plan. So we have two cards that we can rely on and then the great free vanguard maybe is... It's a less of an issue that the great free doesn't really do anything on its own. It all comes down to what the future support line is going to be for heroes as there is a lot of room for improvement. But it's an interesting start. And I think there's a lot of potential here. Now, that said, we have one more card to talk about because there is one more generic grade 2 for Brandgate that can be used across the board for the clan and probably will be played in Heroes as well as we have Combine Rusher. And this grade 2 has the effect on a Rigged Circle. When this unit attacks a grade for your greater unit, if your order zone has two or more set orders, this unit gets power plus 10k until the end of the battle. So, it's a 20k beater. That's pretty nice, and some archetypes within Brandgate can get this relatively consistently. So overall, that's already pretty decent. But there's a different aspect about this card, why it's actually very good and can be a nation's staple card, as it also has the effect, although from drop zone, when a set order you played from hand is put into the order zone, cause Counterblast 1 and call this card to the rearguard circle. So it is reoccursion. This card can recall itself over and over and over again. So if you are, uh, so if you have a deck that needs beers on the board and you want to have a card that recalls itself while you're doing your game plan, this is a great way. Like I think this is a great card that can be used in a lot of scenarios and just recalling a 20k beater onto the board can help you quite considerably, especially if you are one of those decks that doesn't have a lot of resources and you want to have an option if you're running low on fuel and you have like you're in top decking mode and you want to at least get value off of top decking and set order because if your field is basically empty and you top deck a set order you're most likely not really gonna do anything but with a card like this you can at least get something out of it because if you have a couple of counter blasts face up and you have multiples of these you drop you can counter blast two when you play the set order and call two beaters on the fr front row and at least have three attacks. It might not be a an amazing play, but it could help you to secure pressure, tempo, and potentially maybe even wins. So I think this is a solid card that can definitely be played in a lot of decks in Brandgate. And I wouldn't be surprised if we're going to see this card quite consistently across the board. And that's basically everything that we have today. As I said at the beginning of this video, this isn't going to be the final reveal video for DBT06, as we have one more in store for us, as I have one more in store for you guys, which is gonna be all about the new crossover dress support wave, because yes, we already saw the initial mechanic as well as initial cards, but we have a whole new batch, which looks Pretty damn good, but we also have the new Leonore and the generic Stoikia support cards to talk about as well. So if any of those things strike your fancy, then definitely watch out for the video dropping tomorrow. But that said, I'm very curious of what you guys think of the cards that we discussed today. Are you excited about this new hero ride line? Do you think there's a lot of potential? Do you think the current support wave is actually decent enough with the generic card pool of Brandgate? Let me know all your thoughts in the comment section down below. As always, this video has been brought to you by our lovely Patreon over patreon.com slash insider. You guys are amazing. If you do want to support the channel or everything that's happening on the channel, you can simply go to patreon.com slash insider and become a patron today. But with that said, I've missed a time leap and I'll see you guys in the next one.